Cat. It's Maximus here, this time with a review of the Performance Tool Brake Pad Spreader. Really, it's a uh, disc brake caliper piston retraction tool. Uh, what they call it a pad spreader, just for simplicity. Brought to you by Starburst Minis. Oh, I'm just kidding. If you think anybody would sponsor a video on this channel, much less Mars organization, then uh, I have a car to sell you. Let's get these out of here. Anyway, this is supposed to be a uh, offer a cup. Well, first, kind of expensive. I got this on a minor sale for 40 bucks, but they're around 45, 50 bucks on the shelf. The deal with these is they're just a bit easier to use. Lyle has one, but it's kind of bulky and not as wide. And I think with this performance tool one, can actually be handy, particularly on large front brake calipers on trucks and multi-piston calipers, say, on high, higher performance vehicles because it just has such wide plates. That's what attracted me to this thing. Plus, it's pretty heavy. You can quite a bit of steel in this thing. And so I can understand the price. I believe it's Taiwanese. Like, there's nothing made domestically. Nothing. Uh, I've never seen a pro uh, an American-made product bearing the Performance Tool logo. I can tell you that. Man, that is some tough plastic. It's bogging it down quite that bad. There we go. Get this out of here. My goodness. Now, with other performance tools, even though I did cut the instructions off, they call it a gearless ratchet. Let's see about that. So, the idea with this thing, if we can get it to, uh, let me... Okay, so this thing's a little funky now that I got it unjammed. One, this tool is totally dry. The threads are totally dry. I'm getting tired of manufacturers and their dry mechanical tools. I mean, seriously, that's just some insane cost cutting. Particularly for something that seems pretty decent. It has this kind of odd, which is a friction clutch-based ratchet. It doesn't have ratchet teeth. It's just using like a cam that uh, just pinches against the center section. Especially machine, because the ratchet does stay centered on there. It's pretty good. I mean, pretty heavy-duty, solid rear. It's pretty thick steel, performance tool etching. So anyway, the deal is, you just put this into the brake caliper, and you just start ratcheting it like so. And what it does is it has two threads, one on this side, which is a small diameter, if you can see there, and then a larger diameter here in the bottom. So as you ratchet it, it's working just like a mechanical screw jack, and it's just spreading those apart. And so what I liked about this is it's the profile of these plates, these can fit in the, you know any type of caliper, and you get that extra width. And this is a much easier method of doing it because you just ratchet it up like this and then use that. And this is the problem is it kind of doesn't want to shift directions very well at all, to tell you the truth here. Why can't I you really have to kind of squeeze it? Let me get some lube in there. Well, this thing's already annoying me some. I got it all the way out and uh, I've been... So it has some type of a stop so that it actually won't fall apart on you, which I find interesting. But the reverse mechanism on this is not very good. You really got to yam on it pretty hard with your hand in order to uh, get it to want to cooperate. It's pretty smooth operating, even though it does kind of jam up. I'm, oh, well, that side came out. I see. So there's a stop on one side, but not the other. There's a piece I just dropped. I suppose the, that makes sense since these are both unthreading at the same time that when it hits the stop for this screw, it'll be just before this plate ends up falling off. We can see that they use just a set screw and a washer to actually lock this down. And then this piece right here must have some type of a small undercut in order to keep this whole ratchet centered on there. That's interesting. I didn't. They don't even mention that, but... Do both sides actually pop out? Huh, that's kind of interesting. I wonder why you would have it. So maybe be for certain types of situations where you may just need to use the back of this to be able to uh, press against uh, the back of the caliper, say. And then you may want to have just one plate on the front. I think that's actually really curious that it has removable plates not mentioned anywhere on the packaging. It certainly makes storing the tool a whole heck of a lot easier, but it is just a little bit curious to me. I can screw this side in pretty easy. Um, the reason I find that curious is because then, uh, you know, as you use this, those plates are going to want to fall off at some point. And if I can get 
interesting. If you actually are pressing on this, then this thing doesn't grip. You actually have to make sure that you don't have any finger pressure on this. This whole gadget, I think, will work, but it's just a little bit funky. So anyway, that's really all my review for this thing. It just seems a little bit more odd once you actually get it in your hands and get it out of the packaging. I guess it's easier to store, but uh, that could definitely become annoying. Uh, I mean, I guess it's generally okay since they do have you know some ball de uh, ball detent in there to hold these plates. I just don't know why these actually wouldn't just be stamped on there in a more permanent fashion. Many times I like it when you can take apart tools, but with this type of tool, um, it seems a little curious. I guess the only thing, um, even though it doesn't make sense and it would seem that as you're using it, you're going to end up in situations where these plates inadvertently want to fall off on you. It does give you the option of this right here. If we can get this to switch, which is using this as a miniature jack. So now what we have is we just have two square points. You do have to have quite a bit of tension on this thing. Well, just about knocked my camera out in order for you to have enough resistance on the center collar but I think that's probably is kind of a interesting alternative use if this darn thing this thing is annoying how it jams up like that so kind of a funky review of a tool it was actually this whole thing is actually more puzzling to me than I imagine even for $40 it's a heavy tool and kind of why I bought it seems like it's you know, wood work is going to work for its general purpose, but it just has some real odd design choices. And this whole mechanism to where it wants to jam, you kind of have to jiggle it back and forth in order and press your finger on it uh, real hard to get it to change direction. That needs to be worked on. Doing this as a gearless design just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. They should have just used a simple ratchet design, like pressed on a little gear tooth and then put these plates around it. Uh, so it would have been more reliable just using a normal tooth ratchet mechanism instead of having some kind of friction mechanism here. It is going to annoy people because when you're in this situation where it's really loose, then it's not going to ratchet at all. It's just going to rotate that collar is just going to rotate with the ratchet handle and you're not going to go anywhere. So you put this in the brake caliper and you'll be going back and forth trying to figure out what's going on, realizing that you actually have to like get in there with your fingers or something and press on it just to create enough friction with the thread so that that center collar will actually want to hold in place enough for you to drag the ratchet handle. This is just like a super loose nut in a ratchet where it just not enough resistance to cause the ratchet action to work. So it's just when you go back and forth, it's just twisting the center section back and forth. So not as good a tool as I was hoping. I thought it was real nice because it just had these two plates. You just put them in, you ratchet it, but it, this is the type of thing that's going to get grit in there because it's all around brakes, but all sorts of brake dust, and it's one of the dirtiest areas in vehicles because it's inside the wheel well. And the fact that it doesn't work particularly smoothly out of the box, I'm generally not going to recommend it. This is something I'm going to keep because uh, I may use it for as a very small kind of spreader tool. I may end, end up using on some brake calipers, but as far as most mechanics, I think you would get this and you would end up being far more frustrated than any amount of time that it actually saves you over just something more simple uh, and reliable, such as, you know, just one of these brake caliper kits. One of these things is just super simple because all you do is you just take one of these things, you know, put this on one side. Put this thing on the other side, unthread it, put it in your caliper, and push each of the pistons back. Super reliable. You don't have to worry about it jamming up or giving you any kind of uh, uh, grief when you're trying to use the tool. This is a tool that's going to end up giving you grief, and you're going to be stuck in some situation. You're going to end up hitting it somehow, and one of these plates is going to fall off, and you're going to have to go fishing around for the plate. Um, really? think performance tool kind of an interesting idea but uh it was poorly executed here to tell you the truth even though it looks nice anyway i really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing if you haven't subscribed please do until next time catus maximus out